Let's take a look at how to determine square roots of rational numbers. So a couple of reminders. Perfect square is also sometimes known as square number, and they are the product of multiplying the same number by itself. So um, we could say that 5 squared is 25, and so 25 is also known as a perfect square or a square number. Um, so we know our whole number perfect squares can be found by squaring numbers. So for example, we know that 1 squared is equal to 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, etc. And I would strongly recommend that you know at the minimum up to 12 squared is 144. And if you really wanted to impress me, certainly, if you, you can know up to 15 squared being 225, that would be really, really helpful for you um, just to have those at your fingertips, kind of like how you know your multiplication tables as well. So just as we have our whole number perfect squares, we can also find perfect squares by squaring any number. So even taking something such as 0 decimal 7, if we were to square that, we know that that is really the same as saying 0 decimal 7 times 0 decimal 7, which is 0 decimal 4, 9. We can take something such as 2 thirds as well and square that, and that would look like 2 thirds times 2 thirds. Multiplying fractions means that I multiply across so 4 ninths. And so 4 ninths and 0 decimal 4 nine, 49 hundredths are both also perfect squares. So if we want to find the square root of some of these rational numbers, a couple of things to consider. So um, let's take a look at the square root of 16 25ths. So what we're asking ourselves, again, is we want to say, let's think that what times itself will give us 16 over 25, knowing that in a fraction we multiply across, so it must be 4 times 4 is 16, and 5 times 5 is 25. So therefore, the square root of 16 25ths, whoops, must be 4 fifths. So let's take a look at another one. The square root of 1 ninth, even. Again, we're thinking to ourselves, well, what times itself equals 1 over 9? And of course, it has to be 1 times 1 and 3 times 3. So therefore, the square root of 1 ninth must be 1 third. So take a look at those two perfect squares, 16 25ths and 1 ninth. What do they have in common is that both the numerators and the denominators are perfect squares. So um, to have, whoops. A perfect square in fraction form means both the numerator and denominator are perfect squares. And so, what if they're not? What if we are asking for, instead, the square root of, let's say, 4 sevenths? Well, we know that 2 times 2 will give us the 4, but we don't have a whole value that multiplies by itself to give us 7. And because of that, 4 sevenths is not a perfect square, and since we can't find the square root of it, we know that that belongs to the set irrational numbers, and it has a, a square root, it just happens to be a non-repeating 
non-terminating decimal. If you entered that into your calculator, asked you asked it to find the square root of four sevenths, it would give you an answer. Um, it just would allow you to see the first six, seven, or eight decimal places, how many decimal places your calculator gives you. But you need to recognize that since four sevenths is a not a perfect square, that it's irrational and that decimal actually continues on and on. Okay, well, what about if it was in decimal form? So if I'm looking for the square root of 0 decimal 81, or I want to know if decimal 81, 81 hundredths, is a perfect square, an easy way to do that is actually to convert that into a fraction. So we can look at that and say, oh, 81 hundredths can also be written as such because 81 and 100 are both perfect squares then we know that that must be 9 tenths or simply 0 decimal 9. Another way to think of it is that the square root of 81 is 9 and so if I want the square root of decimal 81 because there's two decimal places here I have to take just half of that and so it's only one decimal place for my square root. Similarly, if I had the square root of, let's say, 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, mm, 1, that's the same as 1 ten thousandth and so we could say either, again, in fraction form, this is the square root of 1 ten thousandth, which is square root of 1 is 1, square root of 10,000 is 100, so square root of 1 ten thousandth is 1 hundredth, or 0 decimal 0 1. If you're thinking about it just in decimal form, because there's four decimal places, we want half of that, so then the square root of 0 decimal 0 0 0 1 with four decimal places is 0 decimal 0 1 with two decimal places. If we're looking for the square root of 0 decimal 9, however, we can prove that this is actually an irrational number because, or its square root is an irrational number because, well first if we think of it as a fraction we're looking at the square root of 9 tenth and 10 is not a perfect square or we can say, you know what, if I want half of one decimal place we can't do half a decimal place, and so therefore that is not a perfect square. Okay, next skill or concept that we're going to look at is how to estimate um, square roots, so estimating. Estimating square roots. So an easy way is to consider the perfect squares. Um, that are on either side. Of the radicand, and the radicand is referred to the number below the radical symbol. So if I'm looking at the square root of 10, let's say, well, we're going to think that square root of 9 is 3, and the square root on the other side is 16. So here's our square root of 10 the square root of 16 is 4, therefore the square root of 10 must be somewhere between 3 and 4. It's got to be 3 
decimal something because it's closer, 10 is much closer to 9 than it is to 16, then it would be reasonable to say that this is approximately 3 decimal 1 or 3 decimal 2. If, let's try another one if I'm looking at the square root of let's say 90. Well, on the lower end we have the square root of 81 which is 9. On the up, upper side we have the square root of 100 which is 10. So again the square root of 90 is between 81, root 81, and root 100. However, uh, 90 is going to be slightly closer to 9, and so we can say that it's approximately, I would probably accept either 9.4 or 9.5. Certainly would not accept 9.6 because we're closer to the square root of 81. So either 9.4 or 9.5 on that one. At this point, I would simply ask that you complete the assigned homework and I will answer any questions when I see you in class next. Have a great day!